My name is Mark Turin. I'm the program director of the Yale Himalaya Initiative, and I'm an anthropologist and a linguist. I've been working in Nepal for 20 years now. I first went in 1992 as a school teacher to work as a volunteer in a school in northwestern Nepal. And at that point, I had a place to study languages at university, and I changed to anthropology. I was fascinated by the ethnic and cultural diversity of the region. And since then, I've been working in the Himalayas across Bhutan, northern India, southern Tibet, and particularly in Nepal. One of the extraordinary things about the Himalayan region is that we have an opportunity to study problems, not disciplines. Our questions and our research questions transcend disciplinary and also geographical boundaries. So we can work in a collaborative way with people in entirely different fields, in conservation biology, history, geology, uh, Tibetan studies, and probe really the questions that underlie the movement, the migration, the cultures of contemporary communities in the whole Himalayan region. One example of that is I've worked intensively with a shaman and an anthropologist and archaeologist on a research project in northwestern Nepal that went back to the ancestral villages and conducted an archaeological survey there of the ancient settlements of this ethnic community, the Tamumai, or also known in Nepali as the Gurung. And that kind of collaboration that brings different disciplines, different understandings to bear on contemporary ethno-political issues is very pertinent and is precisely what we can achieve through the Yale Himalaya Initiative. Over the last two years, with support from Yale's administration, we've established the Yale Himalaya Initiative as a truly interdisciplinary initiative on the Yale campus that works not only with Yale students in college, but also professional schools, but with alumni and partners in the region, and of course faculty at Yale, to study in an interdisciplinary holistic way the issues that are affecting the Himalayan region. Now, we've chosen three themes that cluster our research interests at the moment. They are livelihoods, environment, and culture. And we believe that those three themes transect and transcend the region and the different issues that we want to explore together with our partners there. There are a number of key things that we're working on right now. In the next few years, we hope to be able to teach either on-site or through a distance collaboration with colleagues at different universities, many of the languages that are spoken as lingua franca, national languages of the Himalayan region. We're also hoping to explore developing our course initiatives. So we have more courses on different disciplines that also transcend disciplines on Himalayan studies at Yale. There's a growth in student numbers, both at the undergraduate level and at the graduate level, students coming to work specifically with faculty here, enriching the Yale collections and the partnerships that we have. Mm -hmm. At the same time, a number of us are involved in ongoing collaborative research projects with outside funding that bring in regional partners and develop research initiatives in the Himalayan region with Yale Himalaya at the center. A decade ago, when I was at the University of Cambridge together with three other colleagues there, I established the Digital Himalaya Project as a multimedia ethnographic archive to digitize and then return anthropological information from the Himalayan region to the countries of origin. One of the exciting things that's come out of that has been my increasing realization that the resources that we need to study the region, the Himalayan region writ large, so often are not available in the region itself. It seems miraculous at some points that you can research incredible amounts of detail on history, language and culture at a university like Yale or Cambridge, but those same resources were for so long not available in the countries of origin. So one of the things that Yale Himalaya Initiative is doing is trying to share the information, the knowledge and the resources we have here at Yale back to communities and partners. And through a process of digitization, video documentation and cultural return, we're building the partnerships with communities, with scholars in the region. And we see ourselves as partial agents in the knowledge transfer, going back and forth, enriching collections that we have at Yale and connecting our knowledge with communities and with students of interest back in the region. As the initiative grows, key to its success will be the local partners that we have in the region. For the last two summers and this summer coming, we have been organizing collaborative workshops in India, in Dehradun and then in Nepal, in Kathmandu, and this summer, August 2013, in Bhutan, together with our local partners. And what we're doing by, by calling these meetings in the region is bringing people into conversation from across the region who otherwise might not have a framework for regular consultation and discussion. 
Now, all of this is being facilitated, of course, by technology. We have regular Skype contact. We share a huge amount of files and data with our research partners and our students in the region. So a combination of technology, frequent visits, and kind of open sharing of knowledge, given Yale's enormously rich collections, is the future, I think, of Himalayan studies. Yale Himalaya offers a pretty comprehensive semester-long program of Himalayan activities here in New Haven. We have a regular speaker series where we invite speakers from around the world working on Himalayan studies to present on their work and engage with students. We have regular film showings and cultural events and also increased course offerings so students can take courses with explicitly Himalayan subject matter in religious studies, in anthropology, South Asian studies, and increasingly in forestry and environmental studies also. And we have a regular conference schedule, both here at Yale and in the region. So increasingly, we're becoming a center for discussions on Himalayan research and teaching activities to happen in North America. I've also accepted the editorship, together with a colleague at Dartmouth, of the journal Himalaya, which is the foremost peer-reviewed journal of Himalayan studies in North America. And increasingly with Yale at the center of these discussions, we feel we're able to grow Himalayan studies through Yale's partnerships in the region and also with institutions across the states.